This little video series is called Dying Dar's Way, Radically Real Spiels on the End of Life. I'm here today with my friend Sharon, and we decided to do a video on ailing and aging parents. Um, you're at an interesting point in your life where this like daughter love energy <laughs> is coming up and you've been living in Princeton, they're mm -hmm. in Florida. You've got this urge. Talk about that urge. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, thanks first of all for having me here. Sure. This is such a wonderful thing that you're doing to educate people on, you know, preparing for Pre that. Preparing for the end you of know? life. Yes. Yes. So I think it's wonderful. But yeah, I have this urge, as you said, this mm -hmm. passion to really be with my parents now that they're getting, you know, older. And even though they can take care of themselves, they have slowed down dramatically. And so I just mm -hmm. feel the need to be there for them, mm -hmm. you know, to help them out as much as I can. Now, Florida is not my favorite place that I want right. to move to, but, you know, I'm so focused like this that it's about my parents. It's mm -hmm. not about me at this time mm -hmm. because... I have wonderful parents who have sacrificed for me my entire life yeah. and for my kids. So I think it's their turn, you know. So I'm just really excited to go and help them out however I can. Dora. This, this <laughs> is a form of luck. We're lucky when we have a daughter like Sharon. So it hasn't always been that way in your family. Can you talk about the experience of your aunt? Yes. So my aunt passed away maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, kidney, you know, was what took her. So we weren't really prepared for that. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we knew that at some point she might be And gone. she had no children. She had no children. Okay. So she was like another mother to us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's three siblings. Um, but we were very saddened that she was gone and it wasn't a whole lot of planning. So I just see that it's so right. important now that we have to do, you know, much better than we did before. Okay, so I think a lot of people viewing these videos are going to be comparing what they see in the videos mm -hmm. to their experiences and how they would prefer things right. to go if you take a more active role yes. in this ailing and aging uh, part of life, particularly with parents. So yes. you've seen close up mm -hmm. somebody you care about who didn't have a planned dying experience, end of life experience. Right. And it sounds like you formed some fairly specific thoughts about how you prefer this to go. Yes. Okay. Could I you do. talk about that? Yeah. So in to you to mind in terms of for myself. For your now, for well for yourself for and for your folks in Florida. Let's start yes. with your folks. Okay. So you know we did start a conversation, my brother and my sister, we sat down yeah conversation. conversation. Yeah. You know, and so they're telling us about where they want to be buried and, and type of burial. So we've been going over the, the numbers mm -hmm. and all of these different things, you know, what is it that they want? And I just think it's really critically important for us to not be afraid to talk about it. Okay, so <laughs> you haven't had to tug too hard on certain of the issues. Right. But I know for a fact there are other things <laughs> in your parents' aging life that they're... Um, they're presenting some challenges. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, yes. let's go there. So basically, you know, I am going to be moving in with them. They still have a big house. You know, mm -hmm. we were talking about maybe them downsizing, but I think it's a little hard for them to imagine that right now. Right. So I felt like, okay, mom, I'm coming there, but you know, I'm, I am coming with some stuff right. as much as I'm going to try to sell as much as I oh, can. Yeah. Like you want some of your own space. <laughs> I want some of my own space. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I think that's a little hard for my mom because every room, it typically has furniture and some of the furniture is from when she came from Jamaica West Indies and her house so it's memories for her and I get okay. it but I'm like well, I still need a little space for me right you know as much as I love the furniture right but I still feel like I want a part of me there and so I think it's going to be a little bit of you know some give and take yeah. and some, yeah maybe a little bit of benign manipulation in yes. order to make all of this happen but of course right. you already said the key word it happens in conversations, yes. right? These things, yes. you, you've got needs too. Right. You're yeah. going to go do them a great big favor, yeah. but there's this tugging. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, yeah, because it's, even though it's things and things are not that important, I mean, yes, when we're alive, it might be important, but, you know, I think it's just taking time to really look at the situation and mm -hmm. say, okay, yeah, there's got to be a little give and take. Yeah, you may have to yeah. get there. Yeah, but I think once I get there, yeah. you know, because I've already asked, I said, so mom, are you starting to clean up a little bit, you know, declutter for me? One room, one room yeah. for Sharon. 
<laughs> she says, look, when you get there, you come and do what you have to do. So I think it will be easier once, you know, yeah. she sees me start bringing some things with me. Yep. And <laughs> I don't think it'll be as, as hard as I imagine, but having that conversation to say, hey, mom, you think you can mm -hmm. maybe get rid of a bedroom so I can bring my bedroom? Right. That's, that was hard. And my, my sister and my daughter well, laughed at me like, really? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like a lot to ask to have a right. bed, but um, it's a letting go. Yes. It's, it's, it's an acknowledgement. It's yes. an acceptance that things are going to be changing. Yes. Talk for a moment about traditions around, okay, let's say someone has already died. Mm -hmm. Talk about the traditions in your family. Yes. So basically when someone dies, you know, we have the church service. And after church, after the funeral, we actually go back to the home. And, you know, friends and family can come there. We're cooking a lot of food, you know. Food, food, food. food, food. It's, it's all always, over. Yes, comfort food. Everywhere. You know, sweets and all the other things, which I don't eat anymore. Right. But, <laughs> you know, um, that's really what brings people together is the food. And it's then you talk about all the memories and, and things like that. So in your community, the ex the biggest experience might be around the funeral and the actual what happens after death right and i hear you trying to forge off into a new way of of being which includes preparing yes for death and instead of waiting until it's right. all over right um you're probably doing everybody else in your family and your community a service by saying mm -hmm. I am going to drive into this one. Yes. Not, I'm just going to wait for it to be over right. and then start cooking. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's very so, true. Very so. true. I think it's important for us to really have that conversation about death and dying because it's something nobody wants to imagine, you know, right. especially when you're young, but it can happen anytime. We already know that. It don't doesn't matter we, what age. Don't we know you that? You know, so. There you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. Thank you.